God. God, God, God. Do we know what the hell we're doing? Oh, uh, also, those girls turned up. Looks like you didn't kill them. Nobody did. They took some farmer's tractor for a joyride down in Riverton and, uh, landed in jail. I wonder if they know anything. If there's some way to ask them about whatever happened at their camp. I think we'd be smart to let sleeping dogs lie. You're probably right. I have no clue where we are. It's amazing. The same path can look so different. Just coming back to it from a different place. Yeah, there we go. Oh. All right. All right. Round two. It'll really have to depend on if they took the key or not. Oh my god. It's, it's dark as hell in here. Oh my god, that shoe? What if one of the good winds fell down here? Not closing again? Mud. Someone's been here. We can't tell Delilah because we're in the cave. I didn't even take notice of the date on those notes. But it must have been a long time ago for the body to be like that. Shit. My goodness. That still doesn't explain the whole EG and observing us stuff though, so... Better be on guard. I 
don't even know what to say. Like, after... After we discovered his hideout... It almost kind of felt like we... Got to know him a little bit. But immediately after... To find out that... He's been rotting in this cave... Fucked up. What the fuck? Was that? Hey, D. There you are. I've been worrying my ass off. Hey, I am. Um, I'm sorry, Delilah. I'm so sorry. About what? You're freaking me out. He's in there. What are you saying, Henry? The only thing in the cave is Brian. He's dead. His body is in the cave, Delilah. <sighs> Gotta be fucking kidding me. How does that... <sighs> what? I don't... <sighs> How? Climbing, I think, or... Made to look like a climbing accident? Mm hmm look, I, I think that's just what it was. I mean, he was probably exploring the cave and, and maybe his rope gave out. But whoever locked me in there probably didn't even know about him. I'm sorry, Delilah. I'm so sorry. He'd be alive if I had told someone he was out here. I don't know where he'd be, but I can assure you it would not be rotting at the bottom of that cave. I... There's... there's... there's nothing to say. The hike back. I think we're leaving tomorrow anyway. Getting stormier than ever. We still don't know any more than we. Uh, no, I was just busy packing up. Well, there's gonna be a lot more. The service says this thing is two percent contained. What well, is this? The June fire or the site fire? Or... Well, the two fires merged into one unmitigated disaster. They're renaming it after my lookout. You about packed up? Shouldn't we? Talk for a sec, you know, about things. About what? We still don't know who was listening to us, who was following me around, who made that tape. Yeah, all we have is the body of a dead boy who did nothing wrong. But maybe we can still find these people. Look, I think whoever is out there caused the site fire to cover their tracks, and I'm almost certain that when I get off the helicopter, I'm going to be led into a room and made to listen to a tape of me saying we started it. And we don't know shit. What can I do? Well, there's something for you to do. Holy shit. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. We don't know what it is. It could be nothing. Yeah, it could also be whoever was listening to us. Who, whoever made the tape. Okay. Yeah, um... Look, you should pack up everything you need in case we get the call and you can't come back. All right, look, if, if something happens... I'll remember you. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> My god. I don't know. How do we pack up? Like, where's our backpack? How do we pack up Jesus? Always putting the hat on. Like, I thought it would be with the box? Or maybe the backpack? But I'm not really seeing a pack-up option, so you know what? Screw all of this shit. The, the only thing I really care about is Julia's picture. Yes. Oh, I think we just... Yeah, we can't keep that. Can't keep that. That's like the fourth time you've done that. 
I think we just keep it. That's how we take it. So really, not much to take. These books were here to begin with. Why don't we keep the toilet paper in the outhouse? Oh, I might get dirty. Okay, well, I think, really, the photo. Fuck. Was the only thing we needed. Holy shit. Get the hell out of here. It's like a goddamn storm. How is it even okay for us to still be here? Am I getting any closer? What's your status? I think I'm getting close. You sound worried. No, it's... it's just... Brian? I'll coordinate with the evac team and let you know when to head towards the tram. It's north. Far. Past where you found that cut back in May. There's an emergency tram out there that will let you hike to the rendezvous point at my lookout. Someone left a rope for me to climb up. I'm down near the lake. How do you know it's for you? There's a tracking collar tied to it. Someone was leading me here. And there's another tape. Oh my god, Henry. Yeah, hi, Henry. Hey, you better find this before it burns up. Causing each other a lot of headaches. Now I gotta go stake out a site that's as fit for living as the one you're about to find. You'll get it when you see it. You can't blame me for keeping an eye on you. Not after bumping into you back in May. Down by the cave for crock's sake. I've been up here for three years. I kept it cozy. Winters are harsh as hell and I ran out of books. But I got that antenna rigged up, and Delilah, she's a, she's a record you don't gotta flip. I kinda get why Brian took to her. About a week ago, I stopped worrying about you finding anything out, and that's right when everything went shit house with you two. <laughs> you guys don't know anything about having kids, all right? Nobody knows nothing. It ain't Andy and Opie walking down the lake to fish every afternoon. It ain't Mayberry. But you gotta know, I didn't kill him. All right, we were climbing. I was teaching him. Brian was uneducated in the way to do anything. He just... He just, he just fucking didn't sink his anchor the right way. You know, I thought about going back, having to answer questions, and having to get him put in the ground, and... I didn't see the point. Sorry about 
about your wife? We found the surveillance operation. Okay, what does that mean? What is it? It was Ned Goodwin. He was the one listening to us, just him. Ned Goodwin? He made the tape? Yeah. He's gone. He's deeper into the Shoshone. He doesn't want anyone to know he's out here. The... Because he killed Brian. Because he killed his fucking son. You need to get back here. They say the helicopters are making rounds. Okay. I guess he's been dumping trash up here for a while. She doesn't care. Oh, sh wow. to some of Brian's things, his wizards and wyverns. Yeah, well, I'm sure he found it riveting. Don't be like that. I'm sure he didn't want him to die. He... God. What? Nothing, just some of Brian's stuff. Holy shit. Brian was a nice-looking kid. Yeah. Goodwin was the one who wrote the reports I found at the site. He wrote down everything he did to us. And everything he did every day. He was scared shitless. I bet. Huh. He engineered everything to happen. Hmm. He's the one who burned it down. Yeah, this guy might need some help. A lot of drafts. Whoa, would not be missed if removed. Stole the other people's supplies. That's how he kept living. Oh. Then he's the guy who quote quote attacked the teens too. He took their sleeping bag. Winter needs because he's living out here in the wild so he's got to really prepare beforehand for what he needs. Blankets, jackets, Food, battery hour, socks, weight gain goal, because he's so thin from the lack of nutrients, I guess. I mean, he's eating this crap for three years. You should see some of the stuff he was working on. I guess he had a lot of time on his hands. Oh, the engine. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I don't know what you want me to say. We're in the middle of a fire that is at 22,000 acres and growing. Fast. It's gonna burn all of this up. Well, take a picture if you're so keen to remember it. You're not? I don't know. I wish I had more left for you. Twenty-four was all I had. This boombox looks familiar. <laughs> the teens! Wow, this guy stole everything. 
he was rigging up stolen batteries to keep his stuff going. Quite the talented guy at electronics, to be honest. Ah, oh, he's the one drinking beer! Steven's room. Another mystery novel? Nine Lives and Loss. Richard Sturgeon. He might have been taking the books from the caches to entertain himself. He had quite the view. He's got a radio base station up here. He was listening to us on that. I don't blame Delilah. I don't give a shit either. That is definitely the same handwriting. New lookout in Two Fort, Henry. Saw Two Fort guy coming out of cave. Delilah calling for hikers list. Delay her, she'll forget. He never called for hiker list. Dual frequency can hear D again. He logged down everything he was doing at the same time we were doing it. Jules. 2F is a good guy. Haven't seen Mama Grizz in two months. D is drunk again. He's been listening to everything. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucked up, do not want to leave. Hide supplies or migrate. Suspect. Oh, D and 2F suspect conspiracy. Funny, if not dire. Vandalize D's tower, pin on 2F. University research site? Pit against each other! Guy was doing a lot of shit. Stakes too high. No one will believe B was happy. Make D and 2F less believable. Mama Grizz is back. They heard me. Oh, the coughing! The coughing! This guy was smart. 2F also. 2F almost caught me. Can't let 2F find B. But we did. Let's get out of here. This guy was amazingly adaptive. <laughs> So is it time to go to Thoroughfare Lookout? Quite the hike away. Holy crap. Okay. Better start hiking then. I know I should be relieved. Relieved that there's no evidence of us starting that fire. Relieved that we're not crazy. There wasn't some conspiracy. But I'm not. He was a sweet kid. With a shitty father who hid out here like a coward after dumping him in a hole. I think... I think that Ned loved him. He still had his photo, you know? I don't want to hear it. He, he obviously didn't want to forget him. He just didn't know what to do. Henry, not knowing what to do isn't okay. When you're supposed to look after someone, you... You figure it out. Yes. And Ned Goodwin is a shithead who is incapable of figuring anything out. I'm sorry. God, it would have been so easy to tell the truth and have him sent home. I can't stop 
thinking about it. You didn't do anything wrong. You said it yourself. It was Ned's job to look after it. Yes, I did. And now I've got to decide whether I tell people that he's down there so they can retrieve the body or not. And if I do, I'm going to be asked about Ned Goodwin. <laughs> D? Oh, fuck. Is that a helicopter? Yeah, hold on. Hey. No, there's one more. Yes, here, yeah. Yeah, he's coming. Okay, uh, one second. Hey, they're here, but they're making rounds. They'll come back. Um, I think I'm gonna go with them. Uh, D. What if they don't come back for me? They'll come back. That's their job. Just, what if we missed something about, uh, something, I don't know. Henry, you're tired. There's nothing big going on. They'll come back for you. Just, wait. I'm gonna go. Okay. If you have to. I have to. Hike safe. Let's get to the point first. Yeah. I'm a little bit lost right now. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's so... The vision is so bad right now. I keep walking in circles. Okay, I think we're on the right path now. Well... Yeah, we're not gonna meet Delilah. I mean, did we ever think we were gonna meet her? I want to, but... I understand. It's not really casual between us anymore. A lot of shit's gone on. Not really talking about how it seems like a relationship is developing between us, but... It's heavy. It's really just supposed to be a boss and a new employee. But it's turned into something like... I don't know, something a lot heavier? Finding a dead kid and conspiracy theories? Maybe it's something we want to put behind us. Thoroughfare lookout. Straight ahead.
I'm at the evac spot near the ravine. Delilah, are you there? Delilah? She left. Yep. Pretty much just where we came from, I guess. Yep. Well, we want to go back to the very beginning just to have a look. She even had a rug. Such a bittersweet feeling. Oh, all the crosswords she was doing. <sighs> a thousand and one more. Noticeably female shirt. You can kind of just imagine it, right? She would be sitting by her bed, doing the crosswords. <laughs> Henry is white and wears shorts. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. <laughs> Drinking tequila all the damn time. That's why we had that sexy phone call, probably. Oh, does she like peanut butter? Put this away for a second. <laughs> oh, she doesn't have a coaster. Gross. I mean, you can noticeably tell that. This room is a lot more populated than ours because she's like a permanent staff member here, right? But I'm just here for the summer. Yeah, staff issued thermos. What is this pain I feel in my chest? It's weird.
She had everything all organized. I wish we could take a picture of this. But it would be kind of a invasion of privacy, huh? And also... Um, it's something that maybe we should take a picture of with our heart, not physically. I can just imagine her sitting at this chair every single day, talking to us on this radio headset, tending to her flower, eating her apple, flipping through her guidebooks. Hello? Is anybody there? Hi. Y yeah, it's me. I'm back at the staging area near the trailhead. I think I see your truck. Red? Colorado plates? Yeah. It's a piece of shit. It's better than whatever you drive. What do you drive? A piece of shit. <laughs> well, there you go. Although I think there's a raccoon living in yours. Probably the one who attacked my face. Hey, it shouldn't take long for the helicopter to reach you. Okay. There's a debrief in a situation like this. Lots of questions. Ah, oh, shit. So, taking stock, we found out an old lookout killed his only son and decided to become a lonely hermit. Yes. And we prevented one fire? <laughs> Basically started another. Okay, so that's a wash. Uh, I'll have to figure out what I'm doing every summer from now on that isn't this. You're not coming back? No. And you'll have to... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, me neither. I don't know what's next. Tell you what, why don't you choose for me and I'll choose for you. <sighs> All right, sure. Um, maybe... Maybe you could come back to Boulder with me and figure it out down there. Um... Just, just a thought. You don't want me down there. Well, I just asked you. Look, I've got some things to do in Casper, and maybe I'll head south sometime after that. I could come by, sure. Okay. So, what about me? I think you should go to Julia. And then you can figure it out. Maybe put that typewriter to good use. Give me a sexy accent or something if you write about this. I, um... Yeah. You gotta go see her. Yeah, sure. Henry, I... <sighs> Look, you came out to put your memories behind you, and they're still right there in front of you. You're right. I mean, I think you're right. Good. When I get back, maybe I could, um... We shouldn't focus on this summer. Next year, we'll roll around, and then the year after that, and then it's just, uh... My Aunt Judy called it a pause in the hallway of time. <laughs> Did your Aunt Judy smoke a lot of pot? <laughs> yeah. Well, you should try to take her advice, too. Yeah, we'll see. There's the helicopter. They'll land back where you hiked up. Good luck, Henry. You, too. Good luck. No. Henry, you keep it for yourself, okay? Bye, Hank. where she was looking at me from. <laughs>
Oh my goodness. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this game. Oh! Our pictures! Oh, I hate that the last one is of that guy's hideout, but whatever. Aw. Let's just take a moment to enjoy all of this first, then. Oh, that's the selfie from when we first picked up the camera. That's what we look like. Oh, Brian's pictures. Oh, man. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about the moment of weakness I had at the end there. I asked Delilah to come to Boulder with me. And I'm aware that it was probably not the best thing we should have said in that situation. But, um, hmm. The relationship between Henry... Delilah and Julia is so complex. We never even met Julia. And I feel like this is such a difficult thing to be a part of. Obviously, we're still married. But with the whole dementia thing, I know that marriage is a vow saying, you know, we will take care of each other and love each other till death do us part. But... The dementia that Jules has, it's almost like the, you know, the person that we love is already gone. And I know it's gonna sound really bad if I say it like this, but even if not now, even if we stay married, what's gonna happen? We're just gonna keep aging and be hurt and torn apart by all of this. Be torn apart by the fact that we think we have an obligation to take care of Julia for the rest of her life, and it's not like she has a life-threatening disease. She could have a normal lifespan, and then what? We would just be taking care of her for however long and be kind of miserable ourselves? And I, like, I, I know how bad that sounds. And then right during this moment where we're not sure what to do with our life while we're running away from everything, this woman comes. This charming woman who's just funny and smart and we click really well. And she seems to be interested in us as well. Ah, uh, it's, it's difficult. But I do want to note that I think Delilah is not a bad woman at heart. Obviously, she didn't want to be a homewrecker. She could have just been like, okay, yeah, let's go to Boulder and forget about your wife or whatever. But no, she didn't. So that really just leads me to think that she was just drunk that one time when we had the phone call not that it makes it right but i mean when she's clear-headed then she wouldn't do something like that 
I don't know, there's so many things to think about for their relationship here. And one thing to keep in mind is that we really only got to know this person by a freaking radio, a walkie-talkie, for about 80 days. So... Definitely not anything like we know enough about them to be with them for the rest of their life or anything like that. In fact, everything, maybe it just feels really amplified because... It's been like three months and we were pretty much the only person that kept the other person company. And we really got along, talked to each other every single day, even had some light flirting. Uh, and the whole being away from society thing too. Henry usually lives in the city, right? But then during the summer, he has his job. So it's like going on a vacation and then everything, you're, everything around you is different, your environment and the people. And there's just so many new things. But in the end, Delilah, Delilah's cognizant of that too. She realizes that, hey, it's just one summer. Maybe the next summer, we won't even feel this way anymore. Ah, uh, there's just so many things to think about here. Very difficult thing. I guess the other thing that probably people may or may not be very happy about is the overall ending. Now, I played this game over a few days. And while I didn't see any spoilers, I already caught wind that a lot of people were unsatisfied with the ending, very disappointed. They felt cheated because the mystery didn't really amount to anything. And let me just say that I don't share this sentiment at all. Not in the slightest. I'm pretty happy with it. That bittersweet feeling that it's evoking in my heart. I like it. Well, that sounds really masochistic, but... I don't think this game could have ended any other way. Did you want there to be a government conspiracy? Did you want there to be aliens? That, I don't think would make much sense at all. Firewatch is a game about a man who is emotionally damaged. He runs away from his problems for a summer. But eventually, he has to go back to his problems. And that kind of mirrors uh, the Goodwins story too. Look at Ned. He tried to run away forever because he made a mistake. He has problems in his life. And before he knew it, he was living in a cave in a forest for three years. I think people who were disappointed at the ending, um, they probably had a different set of expectations for the game based off the trailer. Because the trailer made it seem like a detective mystery game, kind of, right? But it really is just a real game about a real guy. What I mean by that is, I could really see all of these events happening in real life. And in fact, they probably do. Not in the same fashion that we see here, but... Even just Delilah and Henry's relationship? That's not something at all uncommon. Like, think about talking to someone on the internet. That's exactly what it is. You talk to them, you get along, and then you think you're in love. And throughout this entire story, I could... I could totally see everything happening. Becoming a ranger for the first time in a really lonely place. Because you're so alone, you get super paranoid. Look at how paranoid I got, okay? I was looking behind me every two seconds. Like, it just felt really real. No supernatural events, nothing. But even though in real life, we know that supernatural events can't happen, we still think that maybe, just maybe, something might happen, right? So, very real is how I would describe it. Um, I'm really mostly going to be rambling if I keep talking about this, but I just want to say that I did like it. I love the game. I love the ending. Yeah, it fucking sucks that we didn't get to see Delilah, but it's for the best. We still got to go back to our real life, our quote-quote real life, where we have to deal with Julia and her family and everything. Ah, <sighs> really strong debut title from Campo Santo. I didn't even talk about this before, but Campo Santo, if you didn't know... It's a new studio, and the writers behind it, the pedigree behind it is amazing. There's a lot of top talent in it, including the writer for The Walking Dead, the animator for Ori and the Blind Forest, composer for Gone Home, and even just looking at these titles, the one thing they have in common is the whole story aspect behind them, right? So a work like Firewatch to come out of this studio is exactly what should happen, pretty much. Since Firewatch is mostly based off the story, 
I don't really want to judge it by other things too much, but if I did have to say something, I would have to say that the Unity engine annoyed me. Now, I'm, I don't know shit about game dev, so I don't know if it's just the game itself or actually the Unity engine annoying me. But at times, I felt like I was wrestling with the controls. Like, the default keyboard controls really don't make much sense with um, the compass and the map halfway across the keyboard from everything else. And then little oddities here and there where we, we couldn't set down items, we had to throw it down. And if we looked down at our own bodies, we would be jiggling like crazy. So just little mechanical annoyances, which... I mean, if you came into Firewatch, I doubt you're looking for gameplay anyway, so... It annoyed me, but I can completely overlook it, it's not a huge deal. There was also this other really annoying thing where every time we picked up the radio, we would stop running. And I would have to toggle the running again and again and again, even though I should be running the entire time already. But yeah, like, little things like that. But like I said though, whatever, I don't really care. In conclusion, I think this is a cool game. <laughs> And I'd be really interested in knowing your thoughts on anything about Firewatch. Did you like it? Chances are, if you're listening to this, then you probably got through the entire game, right? So I assume that you must like it at least a little bit. But what did you think about the ending? And also, what do you think about Henry and Delilah's relationship? Those are the two main things I want to know. <sighs> With that said, this was Firewatch by Campo Santo. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed playing it because I really did enjoy playing it. Really enjoyed Henry and Delilah's banter all day every day. <laughs> yeah, this was Matterwellens and I hope to see you all in another place, in another time.